Research. And joining us now from Tel Aviv is Miri Eisen, Managing Director of the International Institute for Counterterrorism at Reichman University and retired IDF colonel and a former Israeli government spokesperson. Miri, it's always, uh, I very much appreciate your time, as always. I just, first off, want to get your reaction to what we just heard from the uh, second-in-command in Hezbollah. He's the second in command, and he's always been one of the main spokespeople. He's the one who's willing to meet Matt and to sit down and to talk about it. I don't think Matt would be able to meet Hassan Nasrallah, the secretary general. So I'm sitting here in Tel Aviv, listening to what that number two has to say. And Jose, did you hear what he just said? Poor Iran. Iran doesn't want war. Iran, Jose, is the destabilizer throughout the Middle East. Iran is the one that arms and brings in all of the capabilities of Hezbollah. Hezbollah, Lebanese, that man sitting there was speaking Arabic. He is Lebanese, born in Lebanon. And to present right now Hezbollah, Iran, and all of these proxies as the ones under attack from Israel, that to me is the Iranian framing. And my biggest challenge is that it is amplified and echoed today in a lot of the Western media. Iran is not the victim. No, and I mean, uh, another thing that he said, uh, actually twice, I noticed in that short interview, uh, short part that we uh, aired of this exclusive interview, is that Iran is honest. Iran is an honest player. Uh, what it did do last Saturday is, for the first time from Iranian soil, attack Israel with more than 300 missiles and drones. Those same drones, by the way, that the Russians are using so successfully in, uh, in Ukraine. But 300 plus, it shows, Mary, that it wasn't simply a warning to Israel on Saturday night. One of the things I wonder about is how much better Iran is at the information war in the fact that in the aftermath of what they did, everybody is asking now, what is Israel? It's like Israel is going to be the bad guy if we retaliate a response. The framing here is so Iranian, I'm really disturbed by it. 300, over 300 missiles. Some of them fell, and in that sense, we can show them. You show them on the screen as we go on. And in its own way, the fact that Israel has just invested in the last 20 to 30 years an enormous amount of our budget to be able to defend our soil, our citizens, the fact that the international community joined together to help defend from this incoming rockets should not diminish from the immensity of what Iran did, a sovereign country firing those rockets in. And again, if I go back to the Hezbollah, very important person, fascinating. I'm waiting to be able to hear that full interview. Um, when you hear what he has to say, it again, his, um, Iran supplies those kind of missiles to Hezbollah. Hezbollah just has not used them until now, but they have all of the array of drones, of missiles, of rockets that Iran makes in Iran in that industry. And here, all of this is happening as U.S. and Israeli officials now say it remains unclear exactly how many hostages are still alive in Gaza. Is this situation in Iran impacting Israel and its operations in Gaza? It hasn't impacted the operations directly. We were already, in a sense, you could see there's high intensity and there's low intensity. Nobody here, Jose, inside Israel thinks that the Gaza Strip is a nice place or an easy place, not for the Palestinians who are there, not for the Israeli soldiers, but Hamas needs to be under pressure. They're the ones that need to be under pressure. And right now that question is, what are they doing with the Israeli hostages? First of all, I want to hope that as many of them are as alive as possible. But the Hamas view the hostages as a bargaining chip. They don't view them as human beings. This isn't about ransom for money. They view them as collateral damage. It's a horrible situation. I have nothing good to say about it. Mir Eisen, thank you very much. Uh, appreciate your time. Thank you. Hey, everyone. MSNBC has a new and improved app. You'll get real-time alerts and analysis, live blogs, in-depth essays, video highlights, and the best 2024 election coverage. Download the new MSNBC app. Here's how to do it. You tap on the App Store on your phone. You hit search on the bottom right corner. You type in MSNBC. You click on the MSNBC app. You click on get or the cloud icon and enjoy it.